Hi everyone, this is Sterp. Long time no see. It's great to be back. I have um, taken a break from you. As some of you know, I released my debut novel, The Cult Called Freedom House, in November. So I've been um, taking a break from making YouTube videos as it has taken a lot of energy and creativity um, for me to do that, but now I'm back. Today's video is part of my horror authors lineup for December. I did this back in October as well. And with that, I'm just gonna jump right in. Today's short story is by Aaron Sweet Al Nehari. I'm gonna throw this in there. Aaron is actually the editor of my book, The Cult Called Freedom House, and she has been amazing to work with. She was just so professional, amazing with editing and giving feedback. I'm gonna talk about releasing my debut novel in a separate video. I'm gonna leave her information below, um, so find her website and how to follow her on social. And she's also a writer, so she just kind of a renaissance woman of all things. With that, this is her short story, The Insistent Reporter. We drove up the rocky drive, the car vibrations chattering our teeth, and the gear shift sticking from so many twists and turns. I fidgeted with the corner of my sweater, feeling a fluttering in my stomach about the invite to the house on the hill. Ben drove as I gripped onto the passenger side car door with wide-eyed anticipation. Gold embossed vintage card stock had showed up in our mailbox one day with a date, time, and location, a Christmas invite for cookies and tea. Leah plus one at 4 p.m. on December 5th. Ben and I had been trying to get a story on a local historic mansion for years, mostly about its architectural reconstruction, but my last ditch attempt had been a pitch for a fluff piece about the extensive holiday decorations in which we'd heard the owner, Miss Rebecca King, decked her halls. The candles lit in each window, which was probably close to 30 of them, gave a warm yet eerie glow. It was dusk and moonlight cast a strange hue, but the house itself stood with an ominous air ever since the contractors stripped off the old fading color in preparation to paint this coming spring. The stone stairs led up to the ancient looking red door, adorned with a bronze knocker shaped like a majestic reindeer and a pine branch wreath wrapped in gold and red ribbon. We knocked, a rather plain looking woman, gray hair in a bun and wearing a black dress and a white apron answered the door. Welcome to Deer's Manor, she said. Let me take your coat and show you into the front room. I'll bring in the cookies and tea shortly. English breakfast tea unless you prefer otherwise. Oh, perfect, I said, putting my hand up in the sign of a gentle, I'm fine gesture to indicate that I preferred to keep on my sweater till I warmed up. As she took Ben's coat, I stood with my mouth watering at the smell of spice, hoping that meant the cookies would be gingerbread. We walked past the enormous tree in the foyer, decorated all gold stars and snowflakes with twinkling white lights swirling around the glitter-laden branches. After my eyes took in all the ornaments, they danced around the room to the fresh cut greens wrapped in lights winding up the grand staircase and emanating their earthy smell. And then to the wooden reindeer posed under the tree with red bows around their necks. After entering the room, we sat down on the two seat antique sofa by the crackling fire admiring the decorations on the fireplace mantle, statues of old world Krampus, Kris Kringle, and witches in various costumes and formations, wooden animals of the forest converging around them. Another large tree, bedecked in blue and silver bulbs, stood in the corner, illuminating the shadows and a portion of the floor to ceiling bookcases. As we heard feet shuffle into the room, we turned in unison to greet a woman who appeared to be in her 90s. She rest in a long gown, shiny slippers, and with golden bangle bracelets filling both her arms. We stood and reached toward her with outstretched hands. Hello, it's so nice to meet you, she said while waving her hand, jewelry jingling, and a dismissive gesture at us to sit. No need to stand up for me. It takes me a few minutes to get to my seat. She chuckled and leaning her cane against the end table, turned around and sank hard into the cushion of an armchair across from us. Your decorations are brilliant, Mrs. King, Ben said, glancing around the room. She smiled back as the maid brought in a tray with two teacups balancing on saucers and a china teapot with a holly and ivy handle. 
Cream and sugar service were also available, white and in the shape of deer and goat heads, with little silver spoons on the side for stirring. Are you anxious to see all our decorations too? She said, glancing towards him. I know men don't always find the appreciation for beauty in decorating as most women do. Oh, I try to see what I can as if through Leah's eyes, Ben said, looking to the side. She's best known for her historical and architectural pieces for our magazine, History Around the World. But she's also adored every Christmas season and history meshing with the beauty of tradition. His eyes started to water and the old woman handed him a Kleenex from her box on the end table. I know it must be hard this time of year, especially, she said. She was persistent, but I ignored her requests for an article on my ancestral home for so long because as you see, there were things you wouldn't understand. I finally gave in when it came to the article on my Christmas decorating, but it was too late. I just hope that I can do the article justice in her name, Mrs. King, he said. It's the least I can do for her, even if I don't know as much about holiday lore and interior decorating as she did. I'm interested though, in what you mentioned about things we wouldn't understand. He smoothed each pant leg down with his hand, a nervous habit he'd had since he was little. Mrs. King tilted her head to the side and stared into the fire. Let's just say that the cliches of spooky old mansions fronting a large forest filled with the supernatural are sometimes true, she said finally. I don't think her strange death was any coincidence, I'm afraid. What? What do you mean? I know she shouldn't have been sneaking around the woods, but she was only looking for a viewpoint to better see more of your home. It was an accident. A frightened deer running from hunters. Yes, those antlers can be quite deadly, she said, wringing her hands together, diamonds and rubies sparkling in the firelight on her fingers. But it was no accident, and for that I am truly sorry. The aging lady's eyes shifted toward the mantle, causing him to gaze toward where she was looking. He saw the wooden sculpture of a male deer with giant antlers standing next to an ominous black goat-like figure dressed in a woodsman attire. His heart fell two beats slower. He gradually turned his head to look the old lady in the eye. She shouldn't have been snooping, she told him, but I do feel a slight sympathy toward you. It's why I granted you the interview, so. If only she had gotten the invitation a few weeks sooner. But even in death, it appears she is still as insistent as she was in life. She had great determination, yes, but I don't know what you're getting at exactly, he said, his voice growing louder in anger and pain. Leah's ghost is sitting right beside you, she said, screaming, in fact, in horror, realizing she's dead. All right, that was The Insistent Reporter by Aaron Sweet Al-Mahari. Thank you so much, Aaron, for submitting your short story um, and for allowing me to read it. I really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to the viewers. And again, I'm going to put Erin's information in the description below. So check out her website and also follow her on social media. Until next time, bye.